this is a very popular uh, it's a very popular uh, configuration which is called as a puma configuration you remember in the first lecture we made use of uh, uh, we we discussed about uh, unimation inc unimation incorporate and uh, we said that uh, joseph engelberger who was the founder of that was uh, inspired by the short stories of isaac asimov and uh, he uh, founded the company unimation inc and this is one, one of the industrial manipulators a puma manipulator was the product uh, developed by unimation inc okay uh, we have got a short smaller version of this over here it's it's a extended one only 3 degrees are shown here but there are more you have more possible uh, you have more arms uh, added to this um, and you have a wrist also so you can extend this okay but uh, i want you to have an have a thorough idea uh, during this discussion yeah so we got this uh, figure and i'll make use of this figure uh, we will fix the frames on this um, using the denavet hardenberg convention so that we are able to apply this convention to this uh, problem to this problem which is an industrial problem okay and it's used in industry this uh, manipulator arm a similar manipulator arms of course the puma arm is uh, outdated today but it's very good for uh, uh, learning purposes there was a time when this uh, arm uh, used to be available in most of the reputed uh, engineering institutions uh, the iits and uh, so on okay. and we can see that there are uh, three prominent motions which are possible uh, for this arm uh here is the base and connected to the, this base is uh, this part so this is also part of the base from here to here okay now uh on this base you have the next link you can see this this part it is the next link which is the link 1 and on this link uh, in fact this link can move with respect to the base about this about this axis uh you can see this theta 1 so this theta 1 is actually uh it's a rotation of this link 1 about the base which is link 0 and then between link 1 and link 2 which is here this one so this one we call it call as a waist joint okay it's a waist joint and here we have the shoulder joint uh, which is the joint between the frame between the link 1 uh, and between the link 2 okay so this is a shoulder joint and then we have the uh, between link 2 and link 3 we have the elbow joint okay so we have got the waist the shoulder and the elbow three of them and uh, you can get a good you can cover a lot of uh, three dimensional space work space using this so uh, let's just see these are called uh, these are three revolute joint uh, joints okay uh, this configuration is pure revolute uh, three revolute joints now let's uh, start fixing the frame uh, frames on these links using the denavet hartenberg convention now first of all we already have this uh, frame 0 which is Uh, written here as x s uh, y s z s so here we have got the x axis and the z axis uh, the y axis is here okay so when you turn from x to y you get a positive direction of z so we will, we can also uh, replace this by uh, calling this as x not x not axis Uh, we can write this as y not axis uh, we'll write this as y not axis and this as the z not axis z zero axis so this is our fixed frame fixed to this base okay these axes are mutually perpendicular to each other so this is the reference frame zero 
inertial fixed inertial frame then we will fix the frame on link 1 in order to do that uh, following the denavit hartenberg convention we will have to determine the relative motion it's taking place about which axis it's pure revolute motion it's taking place about which axis so we can see that it's taking place about this axis so we will take uh, we'll draw this uh, frame in red uh, we'll show it in red and we'll uh, show this axis about which the relative motion takes place okay so So this is our Z axis of the frame one. Relative motion between X naught and uh, between uh, link zero and link one. Okay, it's taking place over here uh, about this axis. It's the shoulder. It's the waist joint. Okay. Now we will identify the joint axis between link one and link two. So let's take another color, say the blue color. Um, I'll take blue color here. And we will draw a line. Uh, we could take it in either direction. Uh, I'm taking it in, in this direction. Okay. So we have. So we have this second axis also, we'll call this as Z2. If you're not following, please don't hesitate to ask me, okay? So motion between, relative motion between link one and link two takes place about this axis itself. But you can see that as the waist rotates, this axis, the orientation of this axis will also change. Uh, because um, this axis is horizontal, uh, you can see that even if the waist rotates, this axis will continue to remain in the horizontal uh, plane. Then we have to identify the relative motion, the axis about which relative motion takes place between link 2 and link 3. So let's take that in another color. Uh, let's say uh, we'll take dark green. Okay. Yeah. So we got this. And we'll construct this frame. So we'll draw the axis here. So, yeah, this is the axis. And uh, we'll also show its positive direction. So this we will write as the Z3 axis. Write it as Z. So we have uh, identified the axis uh, Z1, Z2, and Z3. These are just the uh, these are just uh, the Z axis. But uh, merely fixing the Z axis will not fix the frame. We need to fix one more axis, the, uh, the X axis. If we can fix the X axis for each of these links, then uh, the frame corresponding to uh, each link it gets established. Okay. So let's now fix, uh, let's now determine the uh, axis X1. From our Denavit Hartenberg convention, we know that the X axis, X1 axis, should be perpendicular to Z1 and Z2. Okay? It should be perpendicular to Z1 and Z2. 
Now, where are you going to place this axis? At the common perpendicular. Now, in this case, you have Z1 and Z2, but they are uh, intersecting each other. So there is no gap between them. They are not, uh, uh, you can see that they are uh, at 90 degrees to each other, but uh, there is no gap between them. So the distance between them is zero. But uh, it's for us, uh, we, we have to have it perpendicular to Z1 and perpendicular to Z2. So we will draw an axis, the X1 axis, perpendicular to both Z1 and Z2. Okay. So we will uh, consider the axis in red color, starting from this point, uh, starting from the Z1 axis, going towards Z2 axis, but because the distance is zero, it doesn't matter. We'll just take this particular direction. It has to be perpendicular to both. Okay. So I'm taking this like this. <coughs> so this becomes our X one axis. So we'll show this as the axis X one. The moment you fix X one and Z one, <coughs> the frame one gets determined. Okay. You know that X one is perpendicular to Z one. It is also perpendicular to Z two. So we will uh, also show this uh, symbol of perpendicularity. It's perpendicular to Z one and it's also perpendicular to Z two always. I hope uh, this symbol of perpendicularity makes it clear that X1 is perpendicular to Z1 as well as to Z2. It's a common perpendicular. Well, we could have chosen the direction like this or in the other direction as well. It doesn't matter. Let's take it in this direction, which we have assumed. The next step. Uh, so now we have determined the origin of frame one as well. We can write this as origin of frame one because uh, where x1 and z1 intersect that becomes the of origin of frame one and of course the y axis is perpendicular to z1 and x1 uh, you can turn from z1 towards x1 with your right hand fingers and the right hand thumb would uh, indicate the direction. So it would be directed in this way, in this direction. Okay. When you turn from Z1 towards X1, it will go in this direction. Then we have to fix, uh, we have to determine the next X uh, axis, that is X2. So in order to determine X2, <clears throat> in order to determine X2, uh, let's take it in blue. So We go from, uh, in fact, uh, X2 axis has to be perpendicular to Z2 and Z3. But here in this figure, you can see that they are parallel to each other. So we will uh, anyway take from here itself. Uh, we will consider uh, an axis from, from Z2 towards Z3 and also parallel. So we could take it, uh, it's perpendicular to both of them, Z2 and Z3, okay? I'm showing a small gap between this and that's deliberate. So uh, don't get confused, It's they are coinciding, but I'm just uh, showing this to uh, make the point clear that they are distinct axes. So this is the axis X2. And you can see that this axis X2 is mutually perpendicular to Z2 and Z3. 
it has to be perpendicular to z2 so we will take the perpendicular from here So this is sign of perpendicularity, uh, x2 is perpendicular to z2 and it's also perpendicular to z3. So we also can uh, show this symbol of perpendicularity uh, here. Maybe we could uh, show it a little about below we can it doesn't get cluttered okay so we have got this axis x2 perpendicular mutually perpendicular to z2 and z3 it's always perpendicular and the next is we take uh, the perpendicular, uh, we need to determine x3 as well. But uh, you see, x3 has to be perpendicular to z3 and to the other frame fix over here uh, on the next link. Uh, but there is no link over here. Uh, so what we can do is assume that this frame which has been given to us already uh, this z axis uh, corresponds to z4 so if we draw the if we draw the common perpendicular to this uh, we'll have the axis for uh, we'll have the axis x3 as well so let us draw the common perpendicular from z3 towards i'm sorry So we draw it from Z3 towards uh, Z4, which is shown here as ZT, and uh, show it like this. So this is the frame, uh, this is the axis x3, so we have got uh, the origin of frame 3 also shown here, this is origin of frame 3, we have got origin of frame 1, uh, origin of frame 2 we forgot to write, so origin of frame 2 will be here, so we write it as origin of frame it's this point and we have got the origin of frame 3 as well and you can also see here that uh, x3 is perpendicular to z3 okay so we will also indicate the symbol of perpendicularity here so we we'll take this line and make it perpendicular symbol of perpendicularity with z3 okay so now we have got all the axes fixed on respective links we got the link uh, zero the, the frame zero we got the frame one frame two frame three all of them on respective links. Now our next job is to determine uh, the parameters the, the uh, that are needed for the transformations. 